The poppy. A symbol of remembrance. Your grand's garden favourite. A benign breakfast topping. And one of the oldest painkillers known to man. Today we will explore the history of Papava somniferum, otherwise known as the opium poppy. The unripe seeds of the opium poppy produce a milky white substance when scored, referred to as latex. This latex, when dried, is called opium. From opium we get the alkaloid morphine, and from morphine you can chemically produce synthetic substances such as heroin. From opium we also get codeine, which is used and abused today in the form of painkillers and cough medicine, and thebane, which can be processed into modern synthetic chemicals such as oxycodone and hydrocodone, amongst others. This latex also contains a lot of other things which aren't really relevant to this video. So where did it all start? Residue from poppy seed usage has been found at a number of burial sites from the Neolithic period though it's unclear whether these Stone Age folk were slinging bags or serving bagels. So, whether you're a baker or a baghead, remember to label your residue, so as not to confuse future archaeologists. Residue or not, we know that these Neolithic societies were not agrarian. Until recently, the general consensus was that opium was first cultivated in ancient Mesopotamia, around 5,000 years ago. Sumerian clay tablets thought to have been crafted between 3 and 1000 BC found in what is now southern Iraq include Holgil as an ingredient in a medicinal drink. In the early 20th century, this was mistranslated into plant of joy and later assumed to be opium. More recently, this translation has come into question. It's possible that what was first thought to mean plant of joy more likely means something along the lines of stinky joy or joy cucumber. We did try to look into this further, however googling Stinky Joy and Joy Cucumber proved unsavoury and quite frankly upsetting, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Whilst opium use in Samaria is somewhat debatable, the ancient Egyptians are well documented in their use of it. It is unclear exactly when the plant made its way to Egypt, but the first definitive records of its medicinal use are from the Ebers and Smith papyri. These medical texts are from around 1500 BC, but are thought to have been based on older manuscripts dating as far back as 3400 BC. From these texts, we know that the ancient Egyptians used opium to relieve pain, anxiety and sleeplessness, as well as to soothe crying children. By roughly 1300 BC, Egypt was well known for its thriving opium industry, so much so that the word Thebane likely derives from Thebes, a city on the Nile which was a particularly prominent centre of poppy production. Around this time is also when the opium trade expanded beyond Africa and the Middle East. The Phoenician and Minoan peoples traded it throughout the Mediterranean, introducing the plant to Greece, Carthage and parts of Europe. By the 4th century BC, Hippocrates, the ancient Greek father of medicine, had made numerous references to opium, acknowledging its hypnotic, narcotic and styptic properties. Around this same time, philosopher and astronomer Heraclides of Pontus made reference to a peculiar custom occurring on the island of Chios. He speaks of an early form of euthanasia, whereby instead of succumbing to the effects of old age, islanders would take their own lives using opium and hemlock. A similar mixture may have been used by Greek philosopher Socrates as a means of coerced suicide. Around this same time, another great Greek by the name of Alexander also took an interest in opium, spreading it throughout his empire into Eastern Europe, Persia and India, where it really exploded, specifically as a cure for both diarrhea and sexual debility, separately, we hope. Tales of firm stools and long nights soon reached China, which became one of the world's biggest consumers of opium. Despite opium's growing popularity in the aforementioned regions, the drug more or less disappeared from the European historical record for around 200 years starting in the 1300s. This happened as the Holy Inquisition began its crusade of holiness, crushing anything that wasn't deemed Catholic enough, which opium definitely wasn't, so it was declared the devil's spawn and swiftly banned, becoming a taboo in Western society. Join us next time for part two of this video when Uncle Opium will revive himself in a major way. Thank you for watching, please try not to take opium and be sure to like, subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this. Have a great day. Goodbye.